Bible study. And last week, we, we, we jumped into dealing with prayer. And um, I tell you, man, it was fascinating. A lot of people enjoy it. And well, in part two of this series, and let me open up with a word of prayer before we get involved and get deep into this, because we're not going to waste any time. I'm so excited, and I want to plant some nuggets into you. And so let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Oh, great and mighty God, we come to you right now. God, we thank you, God, for this opportunity. We thank this for this time to be able to be able to enjoy your word, God. Allow your word to be the illumination. Allow your word to be the inspiration. Allow your word to be the confirmation. Allow your word to be a lamp to our feet a light to our path, God, as we move in the direction that you're taking us. God, cover us, keep us, and bless us. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. And so we, we started in talking about the three things, what is prayer? And we, we talked about prayer is our approach to God. We said that prayer is also God's approach to us. And prayer is how we receive things from God. And so what is prayer? So, but the key is that how do we become effective, fervent prayer warriors? That's the key. How are we able to make things move and be able to make things happen in our life through our prayer life? And that's where we're going to be at tonight. Because we're going to look at one scripture tonight. And I want to let you know that, man, God's word is so fascinating that when you get into it, you'll start seeing things that you missed when you initially started studying. So the scripture tonight we're going to be coming from is James 5, 16, and I believe to the 18th verse. Yes. And I'm going to use the NIV version. <clears throat> and as I get into this, there are going to be times that I stop and I'm going to give you the three takeaways but I want you to understand that the focus tonight is to be effective prayer warriors. Now, when we talk about effective, we're talking about being efficient. We're talking about having energy to be able to accomplish something, to be able to move something, to be able to allow things to happen. But there are certain criteria and certain conditions we have to meet in order for us to be effective prayer warriors. Now, let's go to the scripture. James 5 and 16 says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Here's the part. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. It means that it avails much. So the key is that a righteous man has the ability to pray a powerful prayer and be effective to make things happen. You ain't got it. Watch this. A righteous man, meaning that you have to be in right standing with God. So in order for your prayer to be able to move and to do what it's supposed to do, God will now allow you to be out of relationship with him and be effective in your prayers to him. Good God, watch this. You can't sit there and think that you can be out of relationship with God and pray and expect your prayer to be effective. Because when you first go to God, you must have faith in him and believe that he is God. But the key is that not only do you have to have faith in God, but your faith should require you to understand that you should be obedient and be righteous in the right standing with God so that when you open up your mouth, you're not open up your mouth based off of hypocrisy, trying to be a fake person. You open up your mouth being genuine and be a real person which is in the right standing and the right relationship with God. And so when you're talking about effective, it says the prayer of a righteous man. It didn't say a saved man. It didn't say any, it says a righteous. You have to be in right standing. And usually when you're saying you're saved, you are righteous. But are you repentant? Are you very repentant in your righteousness? Are you going back to God 
and say before you even think about your approach, and this is what we take off from last week, that prayer is how we approach God. If your approach is off and you're not repentful, then you're not righteous. <laughs> righteous is all about being obedient to God's word. And it carries on to be a disciple because a disciple carries the commands of God and you're faithful to the actual word of God and you're faithful to that lifestyle, that condition. So in order for your prayer to be powerful and to be effective, you have to be in the right standing with God. Now, here's the 17th verse. It says, Elijah was a man just like us. I had to stop there. Because I've read the scripture, but didn't pay any attention to the scripture. It says, Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for, what, three years and a half. But watch this. In the 18th verse, it says, again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crop. Now keep in mind, Elijah was a man just like us. God doesn't put prayer in a category, watch this, that you can't ascertain. Many people tell people to pray for them, but Elijah was a person just like you and me. You are able to pray for yourself and be powerful and effective in your prayer requests. Elijah was just like us. He was a man who was righteous, not sinless, but righteous. But because he was in good standing with God, he was able to be effective in his prayers. And he made things happen. So when he prayed for rain not to come for three and a half years, it didn't rain. But then when he went and he prayed for rain, it rained. And what I'm telling you tonight is that some of you can pray for blessings to be bestowed in your life. If you get righteous, come on, man. If you become righteous, it makes you effective in your prayer life. So you have to understand that. You have to maintain that relationship with God. Because this is going to be a quick lesson tonight before we can move into part three. But this is the key. You have to be, in order to be effective, in order to pray with power, you have to be righteous. That's the key. So now, one of the other things we have to understand is that when it talks about effective, effective transfer to the actual, translate to the English word of energy. It has to be, you have to be enthusiastic about praying. Now, this is going to get me into the three points tonight, and I'm going to shut it down early for you. Because the thing you have to understand is that you have to be righteous. You have to be in good standing with God to be effective in prayer. When, but the key is that when you are weak prayer, when you're weak in your prayer life, it means that you are a weak person with God in relationship. Come on. It isn't the fact that you can't pray. It's because you choose not to pray. When you're strong in your prayer life, it means that you're strong in your relationship with God in prayer. It's, it's not the fact that you, you're equipped better than anyone. It's that you are committed more than anyone. So it's just like relationship. The reason why some people have weak marriages, weak relationship, is because of the fact that they're not committed in that relationship. But when they are strong marriages, strong relationship, it's because they are committed in that relationship. Everything that you do will rise and fall off of your commitment. You're either going to be successful or you're going to be unsuccessful if you lack the commitment to be able to do what you are supposed to do or what you want to do. And so that's the key to prayer. The reason why a lot of people 
are afraid to pray, don't want to pray, are not effective in their prayer life, is because they're not strong in their study life. They're not strong in the word of God. They're not strong in the word in studying the word of God. So that's why they lack power in their prayers and they're not effective. And that's what you have to understand. Prayer and the word of God and faith goes hand in hand. You have to have the word of God to make that prayer move and to be effective and to be powerful. You have to speak God's word. Watch this. When Jesus was in the wilderness and he was tempted by the actual Holy Spirit and tested really. And when the devil came upon him, Jesus was equipped with what? The word of God. So you have to understand that when things come upon your life, when things happen in your life, if you don't have no word, come on, then that's because, you know, you don't have no word, then it makes you worry more than you pray. Because if you understand the power of prayer and the effectiveness of prayer and being righteous in the standing of your relationship with God, it will allow you to be able to move things and to speak to things and things will move out of the way and God word will become as it is a rainbow word, a living word and will transcend you in the right place. Now, the reason why I talk about weak prayers and strong prayers, people who are weak in praying, people strong in praying, because I want to give you these three points and I want to get out of here early tonight. And I want you to understand this part of it here. And this is critical here. There are three important requirements that are stated if you want a productive and to avail much in your prayer life. The key thing you have to understand is this. It really deals with character. Follow me here for a minute. When you're talking about character, character is not built based off of what you go through. That doesn't build your character. Going through things reveal your true character. When you're dealing with things and going through it, you will see what a person is really about or what that person really is. That's why when people act a certain way based off of certain situations and certain things, it reveals to you who they are. That's why we have that term, analogy, that once a person show you who they are, Believe it, because if something happens and it causes this person to speak, usually they're speaking from their heart and reveals the character of that individual, whether it is positive or whether it is negative. But you don't build character by putting people in bad situations. What happens is being in a bad situation reveals the character traits of an individual. So, the first thing you need to write down tonight in understanding the actual process of effective prayer is this, you have to have the character of the praying. The character of praying. Watch this. What do I mean by that? Effective and fervent these are two words that are translated in the Greek word to say, pray with energy and enthusiasm. What am I saying? If you are not earnest in praying your prayer, do not expect God to be earnest in answering your prayer. Come on. If you go to God any kind of way, lackadaisical, if you go to God with no enthusiasm, if you go to God just out of routine, then guess what? Don't expect God to be in a rush to answer your prayer because the manner of you praying dictates 
the actual action, how God responds. Oh, that's good right there. Watch this. Let me, let me break it down to you. If you had a child and they were in the kitchen and they were in there in, in an area and you were sitting down watching TV and the child says, Mommy, Mommy, your response is going to be, Yes, dear. Yes, honey. What's going on? But if the child response is this, Mommy, Daddy, your response is going to be urgent because you hear the desperation. You hear the enthusiasm and the passion in the voice of the child. You need to get this because it's good. So what I'm saying is that if you're not enthusiastic or passionate about your prayer request to God, then guess what? Then you shouldn't expect God to move hastily on your request that you send to him. Come on. The character of praying is predicated off of your enthusiasm and your actual energy that you present in giving that prayer to God. And if you want things to start moving in your life, if you want things to start turning in your life, you need to sound like you really want something. Come on. You need to feel like you really want something. You have to present in your heart and your desire that you're really calling God for something. Because if you're just sitting there and you're going through the motion, then guess what? You're going to get a going through a motion response from God reacting to your request. And a lot of people don't understand that because your approach is off. You're going to God and you're expecting God to respond in a fast, in a haste manner. But what you gave him was no desperation. What you gave him was no passion. What you gave him no burning zeal, no desire for something to change in your life. All you did was you gave him something and he looked at it and he said, okay, you really must be don't want me. Come on. Because when you are passionate about somebody, when you care about somebody, you will put more time and effort in things and you will make sure that, guess what? You get their attention. Let me, let me make it plain for you. When you're going, when you were dating and you were going out with your mate, watch this. You put more time and effort and plan in how you presented yourself to the person that you were dating. But when you got them, you stop putting time, effort into the process of making you better. You stop getting your hair done. You stop getting your nails and your toe done. You stop putting on anything. You start coming to bed any kind of way. You start wearing anything. Come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So when you're in prayer to God, you have to make sure that you prepare, that you're, you, you, you have that desire, that you're passionate, that you're enthusiastic about, guess what? I'm getting ready to go and pray to God. And because I'm enthusiastic, I know that God is going to change things because I'm going to make sure that I'm in the right standing and the right relationship with him. And I know that because of the way I pray, it's going to get him to move because I'm going to pray his word and I expect things to move. So the character of praying is of essence, the character of the praying. You have to have energy, you have to be enthusiastic so that you can have effective and fervent results. That's the key in God earnestly answering your prayer. That's number one. The second thing that you need to be careful about is the character of the prayer. Now we said the character of the praying now you have to have the character of the prayer, meaning the word translate prayer means to ask someone a specific request. The character of the prayer means if you want, if you want specific blessings, if you want specific things to occur, you have to pray specific in what you're asking for. 
Don't ask God just for a job. Come on. Ask job God for a job that's number one, you have to strategize. Here it is. God, I want a job that's going to give me good benefits. I want a job that's going to allow me to telework. I want a job, God, that's going to allow me to advance and be promoted. God, I want a job that's going to allow me to work Monday through Fridays on the day shift from 8 o'clock, getting off at 4 o'clock or 3.30. God, I want a job that I have vacation. I want a job that gives me bonuses. I want a job that's going to allow me to travel. You have to be specific. You just can't say, I want a job. Because when you get a job, and that's all you get, that's all you ask for. <laughs> and many people are not specific in their requests when they go to God. The character of your prayer must dictate specifically what you are asking for. And if you're not specific in your request, then don't get mad when God answers your request in an unspecific way and think that he's looking at you different than he's looking at someone else or he's blessing you different than he's blessing someone else. If you want the blessing that you know that God can give you, then stop limiting God in your request that you're giving him. Oh man, that's good right there. Many people limit their expectation to advance and grow in the kingdom is because of the fact that we don't have a high expectation of what God can do for us. God wants to give us the best, not the ordinary, not the minimum, not the normal. God is a God that is extraordinary. And what God wants to do, he's wanting to give you the best. He don't want you to give you the good things. He wants to give you the great things. Many of us settle for a good thing, a good man, a good job, a good car. When God says, I want to give you a Bentley, you can get out of that doggone Honda. Come on. Be specific. If there's a specific salary that you want to get, ask God. Once you do these things, God will orchestrarily operate and get you to that level. And it may be a process, but the bottom line is that once you ask him, he will respond. That's what effective and fervent praying is. Number one, you have to know the character of praying, meaning that when you're praying, you got to be enthusiastic. You have to be earnest. You can't go to him like a dis ago. You have to go with him with passion and zeal. And then the character of the prayer has to be specific. It has to be driven toward what your heart desires. The Bible says that we ought to ask God for the things that our heart desires. And you know that's what's in your heart. So why do you lessen yourself and ask him for something that you really know that you want more? Many people go to God in fear, being scared of him, but in fear, not expecting him to respond in what they're requesting. And what you need to understand is that there's nothing that you can request to God that he can't fulfill and he can't actually commit to and make happen. The Bible says there is nothing too hard for God. And so when you're praying a righteous prayer, guess what? You get right in good standard. You have to have the character in praying. Earnestly. Understanding how you function. Make this thing work. God, I'm coming to you the right way. I'm coming to God with some zeal. I'm coming to God with enthusiasm. I'm coming to God in haste. I need something to happen in my life. And then you have to have the character of prayer. Meaning, you have to be specific in how you pray. Number three. Then you have to have the character of the praying person. 
Watch this. The Bible says of a righteous man. The character of a praying person, meaning sin will stop the success of your supplication. If you're not in righteous standing, then you can't expect righteous stuff. <laughs> if you're not in righteous standing, then you can't expect righteous stuff. So if you want to pray well, you have to keep your hands clean. Come on. You have to keep your hands clean. You have the purification is the basic qualification for prayer to be effective and productive. You got to do it. You got to do it. Because if you're not the righteous, the person, a person of a righteous man is a powerful and effective individual. It means that you need to understand that if you're not purified, if you're not set aside, if you're not holy, then you can't expect your prayer to have any power. It will, sin will stop your success in supplication. That's why it's critical for you to be able to, when you ask folks to pray for you, make sure that you go in a place of repentance before you start praying. Many people will call a church to an actual prayer and they will pray for a particular person a particular group but the first thing you need to establish before any words come out of your mouth to God is that you have to establish your approach that you don't block the portal where God is going to be able to receive your prayer because when you sin you close the portal when you operate in <laughs> excuse me when you operate in iniquity you close the portal when you operate in certain type of actual sinful acts, you close the portal. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you keep the portal open. So basically, what it's saying is that the character of the person who is praying has to be in good standing with the God that you're praying to. Because God does not accept sin. He doesn't. And if he doesn't accept sin, then how can a person who is not repentful get in an actual position to pray to God and you haven't reestablished the actual line of communication with God for him to even hear you? It won't happen. That's why a lot of folks wonder why you're praying in a mist. That's what you're doing. That's what James said. You're praying in a mist. Your motives are off because your character is not the right character. God knows who you are. God knows what you're about to say. But God also knows what you have done and what you have not asked him to forgive. Through his son Jesus. No one can come to the Father except through the Son. And until Jesus accepts your sin, your, your repentance of your sin, not only of the sins of your past, not only of the sins of your present, and not only of the sins to come in the future. You have to go through the chief intercessor before God will even hear what you're about to say. That's the critical piece that's missing. Yes, we can go to God any kind of way, but any kind of way isn't a sinful way. We have to be very reverent in how we approach God. That's why, what is prayer? Prayer is how we approach God. Prayer is how God approaches us. Prayer is how we receive things. So how do we become effective in our praying? Here it is. We have to have the character of praying. To be effective and fervent in our prayer, we have to make sure that we have the energy the power and enthusiasm 
when we're praying to God. We can't go to God slack and slumber. We have to go to God with energy to know that he's going to change things because I'm coming to him hastily. I expect him to respond hastily in my actual request. Number two, the character of the prayer. The character of the prayer. You got to be specific when you go to God. Stop being all over the place. Be specific before you even go into your prayer closet. Write down what you're about to ask God. Strategize. Think about it before you ask. Don't go in there saying and being all over the place. It ain't that God will answer your prayer. But it shows that, guess what? You didn't take the time to go before him. And it ain't like you're wasting his time. But it's just like if you went to a supervisor. When you bring in your actual evaluation, they tell you to put it in a certain format. You put it in all type of format. Now watch this. It isn't that the supervisor won't answer or won't, won't acknowledge your request. It's just the fact that you didn't put it in a proper format that he could look over it quickly to be able to respond to your request. And so you have to put it in a format that when you give it to God, it easily come out of you so you can easily give it to him. And last but not least, the character of the praying person. Man, you got, sin will stop you from being able to get a prayer through. Sin will stop you from being able to get a prayer through. You cannot sit there and think that you can pray to God when you're out of standings with God. You have to reestablish that. And once you do that, man, your prayer life will take off and then you will be effective and fervent in your prayer because you are righteous. Elijah was a man just like us, the Bible says. And as we get out of here this evening from this Bible study, I just want you to know that effective and fervent prayer is the key to your success in developing a prayer life. I want you to understand that you can do this. You have the steps, you have the tools, and I'm breaking this thing down in different points in series so that you can gravitate to this stuff and so that it can easily come back to your remembrance. So you know, number one, what is prayer? How I approach God, how God approaches me, and how I receive things. The next thing is how do we deal with prayer and be effective and firm in our prayer? The character of our praying. Meaning, what? We got to go with God with energy. We got to be enthusiastic. You can't go in there like a disco. The next thing is the character of the prayer. Meaning what? We got to be specific when we pray. And last but not least, the character of the person praying. We got to make sure that we have the right character. We're in the right standing. That we are not sinful. That we are repentful that our prayer can get through. Man, this is Bible study tonight, man. Effective, fervent praying one-on-one, -on -one, man. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your commitment. So, if there's someone out there who's want to be saved, who's never been saved, and is in search of a savior, the Bible says in the book of Romans, in the 10th to the 9th verse, you confess your mouth, believe in your heart, that Jesus Christ died, and God raised you from the dead. You are saved. If there's someone out there who wants the plan of salvation and to be able to go ahead and get their life into the point of receiving what God has for them, to be effective and fervent in your prayer life, this is an opportunity, a great opportunity, that you can come along and you can make this happen. And if you go to our website at www.eeimin2020, we're able to be able to reach out to you once you send a contact to us and your phone number, we'll reach out to you and we're able to be able to help you to be able to make it and we'll give you the plan of salvation and I will call you personally and walk you through the plan of salvation and the plan and the sinner's prayer, prayer of repentance. Not only that, if you are a sowing individual and you want to sow a seed in this ministry, it's given time. 
And as our information come up on the screen, we ask that you give out of your heart, not out of obligation, not out of necessity, not out of grudging, but be cheerful in your giving, as the Bible says. That you're able to give because you have been a blessing to us and we want to be a blessing to you down the road. So we ask right now that if you look at that information, do via Cash App, via PayPal, and also if you want to mail it in, you can mail it in. We ask that we will receive your actual information. We pray that you're faithful in your giving. We pray that this Bible study tonight bless you. So EEI, as we get out of here, I expect to see you all on for virtual service on Sunday. But I expect to see you all as we continue this series on prayer. And I thank you for your time. I thank you for your commitment. I thank you for your faithfulness. And as we get out of here, not from the presence of God, not from his actual, just because we're in a physical location, but we know that God is everywhere because the Bible said God is a spirit. We ask that he covers us, that he keeps us, and that he, he protects us because he is our edge of protection. And we ask right now in the name of Jesus that with his blood, that each and every one of us are covered. And I pray that everything in your life is in decent and in order. And I will continue to pray for you as you continue to pray for me and the first family to continue to keep giving you this teaching and to continue to guide you down this road. Oh, man, God bless you. I love you, man. And I will see you soon. And share this word. Share this word on prayer. Because I'm telling you, to be effective and fervent in prayer, it's going to require you to have the right character traits. And that's what God has told me. So once we take care of that, you'll start seeing things move in your life. You'll start seeing things take off in your life. And you'll start seeing God operate all throughout your life. Man, God bless you. I love you. And I'll see you soon.